Good morning. Please stand for the posting of the colors, the national anthem, and lift every voice and sing.
please be seated. Chancellor Dixon, with your permission, I declare our 166 commencement convocation open. Chancellor Dixon, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, these are our honorees of the hour. Please join me in saluting them. In addition to celebrating our graduates today, we're proud to pay special tribute to Chancellor Thomas Conway on his retirement from Elizabeth City State University and for his 45 years of distinguished service to the University of the North Carolina system. Please join me in saluting Chancellor Conway. Lawrence E. Chambers, Jr., pastor of Walton Grove AME Zion Church of Hobbsville, North Carolina, will now come forward to deliver the invocation. Let us humble our hearts as we submit our requests and supplications with thanksgiving. Most holy and all-wise God, our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You who are known by many names and heard in many voices, we invoke your presence on this day as we celebrate the accomplishments of those who will receive diplomas and other academic recognitions, of those who will begin new careers and chapters in their lives on this the 166th commencement ceremony of this prestigious institution. We ask your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we recognize that there are students here today who have traveled through the academic disappointments and failures of the avenues of Elizabeth City University and have been humbled with life's failures. There are those who have struggled and have arrived here today battered and bruised. Yet we ask, O oh God, that you make each person mindful of what they have accomplished. Help these fine graduates recognize their inadequacies and acknowledge your sufficiency. Give them strength patience, and the determination required to become successful in all of their endeavors according to your will. And if they falter in their undertakings, give them a renewed hope and courage, consecrated in humility to try again. And as they press forward, steady their uncertain steps while guiding them towards the mark to higher ground. Bless those who have supported them in their work, in the classroom, at home, and along the way. Oh, Father, we pray that you will continue to give insight to the professors who gave of themselves in ways that only can be understood with the passage of time. We pray for the families who have sacrificed much for the friends who learned from them and who taught them as only peers can. We ask special blessings upon the leadership and all those who associated with this great historical institution of higher learning. As we celebrate accomplishment and transition, gracious Father, we implore you to instore your guardian hand and your protective providence towards us today as we earnestly seek your grace, your peace, and your wisdom. These and all other petitions we ask in your precious name, your son Jesus, amen.
celebrants. Today is your day. I'm going to ask for a suspension of protocol for just a second. I would like all the graduates to stand. We are all here to celebrate your accomplishments today. But before, before we can get started, there's some business we need to take care of. I'd like for you to turn and face your faculty and staff. They are the ones that have poured into you over the last few years. They have taught you, they have protected you, they have served you. They are in large part responsible for your success today. Please celebrate them with a round of applause. Now I want you to do what you will do naturally. That's find your people in this crowd and give them the thanks they deserve for supporting you. One, one last piece of business. One last piece of business. And I'm gonna ask, ask, ask the audience to work with us on this. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. I want you to join me in wishing every mother in the audience a happy Mother's Day. And you may be seated. We had to burn up some of that energy. Distinguished platform guests, staff, families, friends, and graduates. Good morning and welcome to Elizabeth City State University 166th Commencement Ceremony. Thank you for your kind acknowledgement of my retirement. I am greatly appreciative of the sentiment and I'm optimistic about the future of Elizabeth City State University. As we celebrate a period of growth and transition, our graduates, for our graduates, we also look forward to the university's next chapter. Under the leadership of the interim chancellor, Carrie G. Dixon, she is well prepared and I am certain the university is in good hands. I have to say, I walked in this morning behind a sign that says, the best is yet to come. Now I ask you to join me, to join us in making this ceremony a memorable occasion for our graduates and their families. At this time, I am pleased to introduce Bishop Kim Brown, Chairman of the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, who will extend the welcome. He will be followed with greetings from Mr. Randall Ramsey, Board of Governors member of the Uni University of North Carolina Board of Governors, the Honorable Betty Parker, Mayor of the City of Elizabeth City, and Ms. Brittany Lamb, President of the Elizabeth City State University Student Government. Not long ago, family was sharing at commencement. The son who had traveled the journey of academic progress was taking a photograph with his father. The mother had them outside of the hall in which the commencement was taking place. And dressed in his cap and gown, he stood with his back straight, his head high. And the mother leaned over to him and said, make the picture look natural. Put your arm around your father. The father responded to his wife, well, if we want to make the picture look natural, he needs to put his hand in my pocket because that's where it's been for four years. So today we celebrate that there are parents all around this room who are finally grateful 
that your hands are coming out of their pockets. <laughs> President Spellings, Chancellor Conway, Dr. Dixon, platform participants, esteemed faculty, family, friends, and especially the class of 2018, good morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I am proud to welcome you to the historic River City and the hallowed grounds of Hugh Kale's dream. For 127 years ago, the courage and conviction of Representative Kale birthed an institution of a ca academic preparation that today is still leaving a mark that will never be erased. To the class of 2018, I find it hard and unbelievable to recognize today that I sat where you sit 34 years ago. What a difference 34 years can make. Today, one of the largest hospitality companies in our nation is Airbnb, but they own no hotels. One of the largest transportation companies in our nation is Uber, but they own no vehicles. Now one of the largest retailers in the world is Amazon, but they own no stores. And the largest movie distributor now is Netflix, but they own no studios or theaters. That reminds us that you have the opportunity to create and shape the world by dreaming beyond the restrictions of the normal. It is now your turn to pick up the pen of this great university and continue to write not history, but her story. To this class of scholars today, it's your moment. Just as many of you left home a few years ago to begin this journey, today you leave Elizabeth City State University to begin the next chapter of your life. Make Elizabeth City proud. Repay her for her gift of education by living out her standards and making the world take notice that you are walking with confidence and that you are walking with new swag. Wherever you go, please remember you represent Viking pride, Viking pride, Viking pride. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I tell you, we got an enthusiastic crowd here today. How about it, parents? Wow. I love it. My name is Randy Ramsey. And on behalf of the North Carolina University System Board of Governors and our president, Margaret Spelling, so you'll hear from soon, it is my pleasure to bring greetings today to the graduates, to their families, to the university's distinguished faculty and staff, to the alumni, Chairman Brown, members of the Board of Trustees, Chancellor Conway, Interim Chancellor Dixon, and members of the Platform Party. Let me begin by expressing my sincere thanks to Chancellor Conway. How about another round of applause for him, please? Thank you. Chancellor Conway is a proud product of the University of North Carolina system and he's devoted his life's work to it. He has worked steadfast to transform Elizabeth City State University so that it is ready for the future. Thank you, Chancellor Conway, for all you've done and we wish you well in the future. Also, let me recognize Chancellor, Interim Chancellor Kerry Dixon, who is also a product of the University of North Carolina system, just like these graduates. Dr. Dixon's off to a great start as a leader, and we're excited to see what she can do. She's a passionate advocate for this great university, and there's no doubt with her leadership, Elizabeth City State University will succeed in delivering on these promises to future generations to come. Finally, graduates, congratulations. We're all here to celebrate you and your accomplishments over the last few years. The experiences you've learned during your time at this fine institution will resonate throughout your entire life. Your education at Elizabeth City State University 
has provided you your knowledge and skills you'll need to achieve success in these ever-changing and complex times. To the spring of 2018 graduating class, again, congratulations. Go forth and be prosperous. Good morning. As a proud graduate of Elizabeth City State University, as a native of Elizabeth City, and now as the first woman to become mayor of Elizabeth City. Thank you. It gives me incomparable pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of my hometown, the harbor of hospitality. I salute this graduating class for all of your successes thus far. But oftentimes, I think to myself, thank you, Professor slash State Representative Hugh Kale, who founded this great institution in 1891, who set the tone and set the setting so that we could be where we are now as ECSU graduates. It had to start somewhere, and it started with him in 1891. So we want to think about that as we go out into the world and make our way. I commend your parents, your loved ones, and all of your diehard supporters for instilling in you the spirit of excellence. I hope that each one of you will continue to work toward fulfilling your dreams with the realization that sometimes what may appear to be impossible may actually be achievable. In other words, don't just reach for the stars, be a star, and you go out and illuminate this world with your greatness. Again, welcome parents, relatives, and friends to the Elizabeth City uh, arena. And please, don't hesitate to come back for a visit or even to live. Thank you very much and have a super blessed day. Good morning. As I reflected on the significance of this morning's commencement exercises, I recognize that our graduates are transitioning from the university experience to commence the next phase of life. And as with any introductory period, especially in the academic setting, students enter the classroom and are actually surprised that there is going to be a lesson on the first day of class. But fear not, this morning's lesson will be brief. President Spellings, Chancellor Conway, Interim Chancellor Dixon, platform participants, faculty and staff, students, alumni, guests, and the graduating class of 2018. As entrusted to me by the student body of Elizabeth City State University, I greet you with the syllabus of life. Do not forsake her and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you wisdom with discipline. Throughout the university experience, our soon to be graduates have acquired the knowledge needed for professional success. However, the value of their degree lies in that which the diploma does not state. See, knowledge presents the protocol for personal growth. Wisdom guides the process of pursuing purpose. If I may present it another way, knowledge is the vehicle that affords you the opportunity to reach a desired destination in life. Wisdom is the map that guides you on this journey of purpose. You see, wisdom is the weapon used to cut through the oppositions encountered in life, therefore widening the path of success. Discipline is the defense against the deceptions that lead to destruction. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love wisdom and she will watch over you. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Wisdom with discipline. 
graduates and guests, as you transition through life's experiences, I challenge you to seek wisdom and practice discipline. See, getting wisdom is the wisest thing that you can actually do. And for whatever else you do, develop good judgment. It has been an honor and a privilege serving as your student body president. I wish you all much success in your future endeavors. Congratulations once again to the class of 2018. Thank you. We will now be favored with a selection, with a selection, I Shall Wear a Crown by the University Choir under the direction of Dr. Walter Swan and accompanied by Mr. Danny Tate. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've gone through many obstacles. You've gone through many achievements to get to where you are today. No matter whom you come in contact with, just know that you will face more obstacles. But you will also face more accomplishments. So I'm going to encourage you, and hopefully these words can stay with you throughout the rest of your lives, to wear your crown with dignity and respect, and most of all, integrity, for your disciplines, for your families, and for yourselves. Put on your robes. I'm going to put on. 
One more time. You can't be here all day. Right. I know sometimes people get nervous when they when they have to appear and they leave their choirs at home but we got you covered here it is my honor at this point to introduce Margaret Spellings president of the University of North Carolina system since arriving in North Carolina president Spellings has led the state's public university into a new era of performance and accountability guided by a strategic plan that is improving graduation rates, making college more affordable, and advancing the public good. She came to the job with a wealth of experience in public policy at every level, having served as U.S. Secretary of Education and White House Domestic Policy Advisor under President George W. Bush. She is a national leader in the, um, in the movement for greater accountability for schools and universities, focusing on student outcomes as a way to improve economic mobility. In North Carolina, she has forged closer ties between the university and the state's community colleges, public schools, and business community. As she works toward the future of when all, works toward a future when all North Carolinians can pursue educational opportunities beyond high school. Margaret Spellings, as president of the, of the University of North Carolina system, is a leader for times like these. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Margaret Spellings, president of the University of North Carolina system. Thank you, Thomas. <clears throat> what an honor to be on the stage with you today on this momentous occasion. We talk a lot about public service, but Thomas Conway has lived it. His service is one of the best examples of what it likes to truly give to your state and to extend the promise of education. And he's inspired so many people in this state, including me. Thank you, Thomas, for your service. Forty-four, forty-five years is a long time to serve this university and this state, and two and a half as chancellor. His legacy is and will continue to be profound, and he has set this place up for an incredible future ahead. And you're leaving it in very good hands. I'm grateful to Interim Chancellor Carrie Dixon for her leadership. I want to thank the members of the Board of Trustees, thank Board of Governors member Randy Ramsey, Mayor, thank you for being here, all the platform guests, and can we give acknowledgement to that incredible music once again. The possibilities before us are endless, especially for you graduates. We're thrilled with the extraordinary commitment from the legislature that they've made through the NC Promise program that has given such an energy on this campus, funded, fueling the prospects and talents of students and graduates here today. This is my seventh visit to this campus, feeling that energy, but I must say I'll never forget my first trip. It was a little more than two years ago, and I had the privilege of joining Chancellor Conway for a sneak preview of the exhibit 
on ECSU's history of, at the Museum of the Albemarle. There were photographs and documents from the state archives along with commencement programs and Founders Day proclamations from decades past. Some of the most striking material was loaned or donated by alumni eager to tell their story of this place in their own voices, stories of what this place has meant to them. So I want each of you to be sure to save your graduation selfies and congratulatory text messages from family and friends because they might end up in a museum as you all celebrate your 150th birthday. What was clear to me then, and as I was first introduced to ECSU, and what is absolutely crystal clear now, is that the identity and history of this institution is closely tied to this town, this region, and what it means to be an HBCU today. I mention this because context matters and history matters. We cannot ignore the world in which we live and we cannot be ignorant of the way the world was. But we get to decide how to respond. Whether we'll meet the challenges of our day with despair or determination, or maybe both. We get to decide what causes deserve our energy and attention, what higher callings we will serve, what we hope to preserve, and what we intend to change. We hear a lot of rhetoric today about our unsettled times, about the rapid changes in our economy and in our public life. As a university president, I spend plenty of time talking about change and adaptation and the need to better prepare for an evolving world. And of course, that's all true. You grew up in an economy transformed by trade, technology, and a financial crisis. And you're coping with some of the most sweeping changes in human communication since the invention of the printing press. And you've seen politics torn between inspiration and ugliness. It's enough to make anybody anxious about the future. But we're here today celebrating the power and potential of what I believe is the antidote to those challenges, and that is education. When I attended the University of Houston some years ago, I wasn't captivated or blown away by my time there. I wanted to get out into the real world and start life in earnest. But when I began working in state politics and policy, I found myself drawn right back to education. It seemed that every policy issue that mattered had its solution rooted in better educating our people. I was hooked, and I began a route that led me to dedicate my career to expanding educational access, getting more students a high-quality education, reducing disparities, and most of all, rejecting what my former boss used to call the soft bigotry of low expectations. I've long believed that a good education should be an option to everyone that wants it. And we should encourage people from every background to reach higher than they may have thought possible. But for all of the thought and effort that people like me, Dr. Conway and Dr. Dixon put into education policy, for all the time we spend trying to design programs to improve access and craft messages to convince people that pursuing an education is worthwhile, nothing we do is as powerful as you. The examples you set as parents, professionals, activists, and advocates as proud Vikings matter far more than you know. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've heard from someone on graduation day who went to college because they saw a friend, a coworker, a parent, or even their own child earn a diploma. And that gave them the courage to go for it, to move from vague hope to concrete action. I'm sure many of these people in your own lives are here today. Thank them today 
now and always, but most importantly, become that spark for others as you head into the world over the coming months and years, finding good jobs, raising your families, tending to your communities, try hard to remember what it felt like when all of that was uncertain, when it seemed far off and hazy. Remember it and share it so that others know there's a path for them too. Remember it and share it so you'll stay connected to the people who help you along the way. Remember it and share it so that in your moments of struggle, there will be others ready to lift you up as you have lifted others. Even when it doesn't seem like it in the moment, remember that your actions matter and your power is real. The kind of country we'll become depends less on today's headlines and more on what kind citizens what kind of citizens you choose to be. How you go about your work as teachers, as managers, social workers, pilots, and police officers. That will define the quality of life for you, for your neighbors, for this region, for North Carolina, and for our nation. <clears throat> that last point is important because what inspires me the most about education is not just the effect it has on those who earn a diploma or a degree in our institutions, but what it does for all of those who never walk through the doors of one of our colleges or universities. The UNC system and ECSU, the public institutions that we are so proud of, do their part. Attending one of our universities is an experience defined by extraordinary commitment of our fellow citizens to cover nearly two-thirds of the cost of your attendance. It's a commitment based on the belief that education will lift every North Carolinian to a better life. It's an investment for the family here in Pasquotank County whose child will go to class and learn from a Viking teacher. It's an investment for the community in Currituck County that's strengthened by the work of a social worker trained at this university. It's an investment for the high school graduate in Chihuahuan County who gets a job at a business started by an ECSU graduate. And in its investment for every resident of Elizabeth City benefiting from the leadership of a terrific mayor and ECSU alum, Betty Parker, one of the many leaders who were trained right here and whose vision and dedication serves everyone in the region. ECSU is a public institution and its graduates advance the public good. We know progress isn't smooth and it isn't necessarily assured. It demands constant effort, tireless upkeep, and the creative hope of people like you. The experience and lessons of those who came before us show us that change is possible and together we can build a better future. We talk a lot about the American dream, the idea that through hard work you can have a better life than your parents had, that your future can be defined by prosperity because of your talent and commitment. But I think there's another aspect of the American dream. It's also the idea that no matter who you are, your actions make a big difference. That you're not a cog in a machine, that you're not lost in the crowd, but rather your impact is only limited by your ambition and imagination. It makes me think back to the Museum of the Albemarle. Before too long, it'll be your faces in that museum, your decisions shaping the history Viking graduates learn and the world we live in. So take a moment to rest, reflect, celebrate, and thank all of the people who played a part in this day, but only a moment. We need you and your talents out here in the wider world. Graduates, Congratulations on your achievements. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you.
President Spellings, if I can get you back here. We want to present a couple of gifts here. The first one, and you can pull that one out. And a traditional, we want people to remember their participation in the Elizabeth City State University. But in addition to that, we want a little bit of blue and white, a little ECSU blue and white at general administration. So we've got a goodie, goodie bag uh, packed for you there. Thank you. To wear as you do your business. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, now Governor Randall Ramsey of the UNC Board of Governors will present the 2018 Board of Governors Award for Teaching Excellence. just when you thought you got rid of me, right? We're here today to celebrate faculty as well. Their dedication and contributions to the university. There are a number of faculty members on this campus who exemplify outstanding teaching. Today, I'd like to recognize one of those uh, faculty members. It is my privilege to present this year's Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching to one of your most outstanding faculty members. Established by the Board of Governors in 1994 to underscore the importance of teaching and to reward great teachers across the university, the awards are given annually to a tenured faculty member from each UNC campus. Recipients are nominated by special committees on their home campuses and selected by the Board of Governors. Each winner receives a bronze medallion and a cash award. This year's recipient from Elizabeth City State University is Dr. Marjorie Colson Clark. <laughs> Dr. Colson Clark and Chancellor Conway, would you join me, please? He doesn't know. You're in charge. Chancellor. Dr. Colson Clark first served Elizabeth City State University from 1998 to 2001. She returned in 2002 and currently serves as a professor in the field of social and behavioral sciences department, concentrating on public administration and political science. Dr. Colson Clark is a former ECSU assistant vice chancellor for academic affairs and a former special assistant to the chancellor for institutional research planning and outreach. She has also served as the chair of the social science and behavioral sciences department. In other words, she's done it all here. Dr. Colson Clark says her teaching philosophy incorporates technology, assessment, interactions, ethical principles, personal development, and personal accountability. Her goal is to encourage students to face their fears with confidence and maximize their academic potential. She believes that teaching students to become great future decision makers must always remain central to her style of teaching. It is her desire to leave this world a better place than she found it, and she plans to do this one student in one class at a time. Dr. Colson Clark, we celebrate your outstanding professional achievement and salute your commitment to teaching and inspiring new generation of learners. In honoring you, we also acknowledge more than 14,000 dedicated family faculty and 225,000 students across the university system. Congratulations.
Thank you, Governor Ramsey, and to the entire board, University of North Carolina System Board of Governors for recognizing Dr. Marjorie Colson Clark for her contributions uh, toward teaching excellence. Congratulations also, Dr. Colson Clark. We would like to recognize our 2018 Departmental Teacher, Teachers of the Year. Uh, would the recipients please stand and be recognized as I call your names? Dr. Dorothy Kershaw, uh, Gary, uh, Ergen, I'm sorry. <laughs> Professor, Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Thank you. Dr. Dolapo Adedeje, Associate Professor, Department of Natural Sciences, Pharmacy and Health Profession. And Mr. Jeffrey Whalen, Associate Professor, Department of Visual and Performing Arts. Professors Emerita, it is, <clears throat> it is my honor to acknowledge two professors with long distinguished careers at Elizabeth City State University who are retiring this year. With the approval of the ECSU Board of Trustees, Dr. Linda Bailey Hayden and Dr. Claudia J. Mackey were named Professor Emerita for their outstanding service to the university. Dr. Linda Hayden, Please join me in the, on the podium. Dr. Hayden joined the faculty at ECSU in 1980. She is the director of the university's Center for Excellence in Remote Sensing Education and Research and professor of mathematics. Her work over the years has garnered at the, uh, has garnered a great deal of praise by the national scientific community, as well as brought honors to ECSU. Thank you for your work, Dr. Hayden, and for her students. Uh, because of the work of Dr. Hayden and her students, a bay in the Antarctica was named ECSU Bay as it was discovered by Dr. Hayden and her research team. Dr. Hayden is a prolific research and grant writer. She has received over $23 million in external funding. It's even more exceptional, she used over 70% of that funding to support students, undergraduate, graduate, and high school students in the STEM discipline. Dr. Hayden, Professor of Mathematics and Computer Science, it is my pleasure to present you. I'll be back. <laughs> it's my pleasure to present you with this plaque in honor of your contributions to Elizabeth City State University. Thank you, Thank you so much. I think they're going to get pictures there. Let's Next, I'd like to invite Dr. Claudie Mackey to the podium. Dr. Mackey is an alumnus of Elizabeth City State University. He joined the faculty here in 1977. During his tenure at the university, Dr. Mackey has served as head basketball and track coach the Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, focusing on external relations, and the Interim Dean for the School of Education and Psychology, and most recently, the Athletics Director. He is retiring as the Mark Bass Knight Distinguished Professor of Education in the Department of Education and Psychology and Health. Dr. Mackey has received over $7 million in external funding. Dr. Mackey, Professor of Education. 
It is my pleasure to present you with this plaque in honor of your contributions to Elizabeth City State University. Dr. Ma <clears throat> sorry. Elizabeth City State University serves as a host senior military science program which produces leaders for the United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Judy Anthony will come and administer the ceremonial oath of office to our newly commissioned second lieutenant. It is important to remember about 8% of America's population serves in the military. Only 1% at any time is serving active duty. These young people are going into the United States military so that we can sleep well at night. Look, Colonel Anthony. For me, I state your full name. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, do solemnly swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservations or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Chancellor Dixon, we now recommend candidates for graduate degrees. Chancellor Dixon, it is my privilege to report to you that candidates here assembled have qualified in all aspects for their degrees by successfully completing curriculum offered by the graduate program in school administration, biology, and mathematics at Elizabeth City State University. Would the candidates
for the Masters of School Administration, Masters of Science in Biology, and Masters of Science in Mathematics, please stand and remain standing. Chancellor Dixon, it is with pleasure that I present to you these candidates who have completed all of the requirements for graduation. They have been certified by the registrar and have received an affirmative vote by the faculty to be awarded the master's degree in school administration, biology, and mathematics, and are now, re are now recommended to you for the conferral of their degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in, by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Would the candidates for the Masters of School Administration, Masters of Science in Biology, and Masters of Science in Mathematics please proceed to the stage to receive your diplomas. Sharon Bell. Rachel Benton. Chandra Ely. Nina Griffin, Katherine Cook, Tina Maurer, Valerica Mentor, Deborah West. Robin Bryce. Joy Chuku. Jessica Gonenen. <laughs> Tibeti Wamara. Elijah Peppers. <laughs> Myla Worthington. Congratulations, please be seated. <laughs> Baccalaureate degrees will now be conferred. Chancellor Dixon, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for their diplomas by successfully completing curricula offered by 
the academic departments here at Elizabeth City State University. They've been recommended by the, the department chairs, approved by the Honors Council where appropriate, and certified by the registrar. And they have received an affirmative vote by the faculty to be awarded the diplomas, the Bachelor of Science in Education, the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Arts, and the Bachelor of Social Work. At this time, Chancellor Dixon, I'm pleased to begin the conferral of undergraduate degrees by presenting the bearer of the mace. <laughs> Chancellor Dixon, it is my pleasure, my distinct pleasure, to inform you that the official bearer of the mace is Nicole Luziano. <laughs> Nicole is a criminal justice major from Charlotte, North Carolina, and she has a cumulative grade point average of 3.968. Will the bearer of the mace, Ms. Nicole Luziano, please come forward to receive your diploma. Nicole Laza Audio, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations, Nicole. Chancellor Dixon, before we proceed with the conferral of degrees, I'm honored to have the opportunity to recognize those seniors who have graduated with highest honors, summa cum laude, having achieved by their diligence a cumulative grade point average of 3.8 to 4.0. Will all of those undergraduate students with those GPAs, seniors, would you please stand? Magnum cum laude with a grade point average of 3.6 to 3.79. Would you please stand? And seniors who are graduating with honors cum laude with a grade point average of 3.25 to 3.59. Would you please stand? those seniors who have completed four years in the university's honors program, many of whom were just standing. With those students who are in the honors program, would you please stand? You may be seated. I am pleased to acknowledge all of the summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude graduates and graduates of the university's honors program. 
I commend you for having achieved the excellence required by a highly rigorous curriculum. I encourage you to continue to excel. Thank you. Chancellor Dixon, I'm now pleased to present to you the candidates for their respective diplomas. Chancellor Dixon, on the recommendation of department chairs certified by the registrar and by an affirmative vote of the faculty, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for the Bachelors of Science in Education, the Bachelors of Science, the Bachelors of Arts, and the Bachelors of Social Work. Will the candidates for undergraduate degrees please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the Elizabeth City State University Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Chancellor Dixon, I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelors of Science in Education. Will the candidates for the Bachelors of Science in Education please come forward to receive your diplomas? Dana Chandler. Sarah Dalgadillo. Tamisha Dillard. Delana Draper. Brianna Henderson. Ashley Kuno, Peggy Maudlin, Tyshea Montgomery, Brianna Rosier. Deja Smith. Kanita Speller. Jessica Sweet. Daenera White. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the candidates for the Bachelors of Science degree please stand? <laughs> candidates, please come forward to receive your diplomas. Lanasia Alexander. Courtney Alexander Weston. Yeah. 
Ashley Arnold. Erica Idlet. Siobhan Banks. Delacio Bartley Jr. Ariel Beeman. Zakia Beasley. Shanitra Biggs. Justin Blue the Third. Aliyah Boyd. Terish Brand. Diavante Brown. Jalen Brown. Joshua Broyles. Brandy Burden. Catherine Burton. Delshawn Campbell. Sean Campbell. William Carruthers. Darrell Chambers. Jasmine Cooper. Thais Cooper. Davion Council. Clayton Cowell. Stephanie Crane. Kevin Cross. Jalea Cunningham. Kelsey Douglas. Calvin Dudley Jr.
Hunter Eason. Dylan Eaves. William Fallon the second. Lisa Felton. Aaliyah Floyd. Tavion Garner. Joshua Gonenen. Joel Gonzalez Santiago. Sean Grace. Nyasia Harris. Bobby Hartwell. Jessica Hathaway. Samara Hauser. Jennifer Holly. Michael Hilton. Megan Hines. Hagen Hodgkins. Kyle Holloway. William Howard. Joyce Hunter. Iron James. Trisami Jernigan. Austin Johnson. Jordan Jones. Matthew Jones. Mykira Jordan. Joshua Joyner. Kaderis Joyner. Tyrion Land. Chance Loginger. Jocelyn Lewis.
Derek Lindsay. Tony Lyon. Jana Meadows Savory. Momen Muhammad. Ferrando Moore the second. Richard Murphy. Daquan Neal. Regine Norris. Crystal Owen. Jalen Owens. Shania Parker. Cassandra Peel. Joshua Peterson. Kendrick Pitt. Taekwon Pohl. Demandre Price. Jernique Privet. Shinoa Pugh. Solomon Radcliffe. <laughs> Tiffany Riddick. <laughs> Jocelyn Robertson. <laughs> Quashon Robinson. Efren Rosado. Seasia <laughs> Browson. Nancy 
called. Logan Waller Brian Wells Darius White Chantel Williams Jordan Williford Stockton Please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts degrees please stand? Chancellor Dixon, I'm pleased to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts for their diplomas. Would you please come forward to receive your diplomas? Dana Ballard Salacious Blunt Catherine Buchanan Janika Burris Joshua Caldwell Tyler Klein
future. Will the candidates for the Bachelors of Social Work degree, would you please stand? <laughs> Chancellor Dixon, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Social Works for their respective diplomas. Would you please come forward to receive your diploma? Jones. <laughs> 
Shaquana Pettis. Sarah West. Danielle Yelverton. Please be seated. Chancellor Dixon, this concludes the conferral of diplomas upon the graduates comprising the spring graduating class of 2018. Now, would all the graduates with bachelor degrees please stand. Please symbolize the attainment of your respective degree by turning your tassels from right to left. Let's give him another round of applause. Please be seated. To the spring 2018 graduates, on behalf of the entire university community, I extend hearty congratulations to all of you for achieving this milestone in your lives. Congratulations. This time, at this time, I would like to recognize the honor marshals. Honor marshals are the highest ranking students academically from the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes. These students were invited to participate in today's, as today's honor marshals. Will the honor marshals please stand and be recognized? You may be seated. Also at this time, I would like to recognize and thank the ECSU Commencement Committee, the ECSU Symphonic Wind Ensemble, under the direction of Ms. Juliette Borkins, and the ECSU Choir under the direction of Dr. Walter Swan. Please. Now I would like to welcome to the podium Ms. Shanataka Battle, President of the Senior Class, to deliver the farewell address. Greetings. Chancellor and First Lady Conway, Chancellor Dixon, President Spellings, 
outstanding faculty and staff, distinguished board of trustees, platform guests, beloved alumni, supportive family and friends, and to the best class that will ever walk across this stage. I am Shanadika Battle, the senior class president at the illustrious Elizabeth City State University. These last four years have been an amazing journey. A journey filled with academic excellence, hot parties, Greek life reforming, Viking Fest, and people we've met along the way who we will take with us into our next. You will leave here with all the tools needed to venture into the world and become successful. Today is your day, and I hope you are ecstatic. Don't merely try to be better than your contemporaries or your predecessors. Strive to be better than yourself. Without commitment, you'll never start. More importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. There's a song that states, I want to leave my footprints on the sands of time and know that there was something that meant something that I left behind. Meaning, leave this ceremony today and go into the world and make everlasting impacts. Whether you'll be soon teaching, a lawyer, a scientist, or a social worker, Whatever the case may be, leave your footprints in the hearts of those you've encountered. Be that change you wish to see in the world. A new journey begins today, and it will be full of ups and downs, joys and disappointments. Use these as stepping stones to make you stronger, wiser, and more determined. I know each of us are hungry for success, so let's go out into our next journey and eat all eat up all the limitless opportunities that are awaiting us. Aristotle said, you are what you repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence should be a habit, not an act. Follow the passion that lies within your heart and it will lead you to your purpose. As I am truly proud of each of you graduates, I congratulate you talented individuals with best love and wishes, your senior class president, thank you. I will invite to the podium at this time, Ms. Gwen Saunders, Secretary of the University, who will administer the oath of allegiance to the university. Good morning. I am Gwen Sanders, Secretary of the University and a proud graduate of Elizabeth City State University. I am standing this morning on behalf of Mr. Abdul Rashid, who is president of the ECSU National Alumni Association. And if you will raise your right hands and repeat after me. I hereby solemnly pledge unbroken allegiance to my alma mater in appreciation for the opportunities for development afforded me as a student at Elizabeth City State University. I pledge active membership in the National Alumni Association wherever I may be, through association with my fellow alumni, I shall forever do my best to uphold the ideals and traditions of my alma mater. I pledge as a person to exemplify high ideals by rendering positive and dignified service to the community, state, nation, and world, thus living to bring honor and respect to my alma mater. 
thank you. It is with great Viking pride that I say on behalf of Abdul Rashid, congratulations to our newest alumni. Viking pride, Viking pride, Viking pride. Thank you. Dr. Swan, you wanna get set up, please? Um, I get a few minutes here just to say to this class, or to, to share a few parting thoughts. There's several things I would, would really like to say to you, but I, I'm gonna, gonna do it in just two or three things. First of all, as Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University, one of the things that I have always been proud of and able to do is that wherever I go, whoever I'm talking to, whenever asked, tell me about your university, tell me about the worth of your university, tell me about the progress of your university, I could say, just talk to our alumni. Wherever I go around this country, I can point to the accomplishments of the alumni of Elizabeth City State University. This past year, we did things like institute a new 40 under 40 program, which brought a lot of, of young alums back to the fold to talk about their accomplishments. And what impressed me most about them is that as they had moved on into their careers, they had moved into careers that were associated with their major, they were in professional positions that were associated with what they studied, but they also exhibited an entrepreneurial spirit. They had started their own enterprises. They were creating jobs, not just looking for jobs. That's what the Viking spirit is. That's what the Viking spirit does. That's what you've been taught to do. I was interviewed a, a few days ago by one of the members of this class. And one of the questions I was asked was, tell me about what you see in this generation, some of the criticisms of this generation. And I said, you know, it's hard for me to talk about criticisms of this generation because I see the positive. What I see in this generation is a generation that wants to make things better. I see a generation committed to doing things and, and as you look globally, as you understand all the challenges of the world, your focus is your backyard. You want to make things better at home. You want to make things better with your families. You want to make things better in your communities. And let me say that I believe wholeheartedly that is in line with the values that Elizabeth City State University has worked to impart to you over the course of the last several years while you were getting your degree. You know, I was reminded earlier, uh, it was last year, one of our alums asked the question at a session, what do you mean when you yell Viking pride? What is it you mean when you, you, you do it and you yell the Viking pride and you stand up and everybody gets excited? And he went through a series of questions around that. But you need to understand, and you already understand, but you need to help the world understand that for some people, Pride in their institution may be a slogan, but when Vikings say Viking pride, we mean Viking pride. Give it up. I'm gonna share one thing, and then I wanna share, actually I'm gonna share a couple of things with you. Uh, you know, I'm a, I am a uh, member of a Greek letter organization. I, I see everything as a, as a teaching and learning experience. Uh, some of you got really excited and did a little step as you were leaving the stage. See, the, the, the problem with that is twofold. First of all, I would quote uh, a, a line from the Black Panther movie. You got to understand in situations like this, the world is watching. And secondly, you are leaders now. And, and all of those folks that were cheering for you up there who will be graduating in subsequent classes are now planning their steps on that end of the stage. And that's going to be a problem. So we're gonna work, we're gonna work through understanding how we celebrate. We're gonna provide you with the opportunities to do that, but we're probably not gonna do it as part of this ceremony. I'm going to switch now. I, I, I like to, I would like to give you a gift. 
One of the things that uh, I do is constantly search for talent in our, in our university, in our community. And I was introduced by proxy to a young lady, Miss Nayana Parker, who is a 15-year-old student in Hertford, who has a talent that when I heard, I said, this class, she has something to say to this class by way of debuting a song that she has put together that I would like to give this graduating class as a gift. Nayana? She will be accompanied by Dr. Walter Swan. Congratulations to the class of 2018. <laughs> my name is Nayana Parker, and I'll be debuting my original. I would like to thank Chancellor Conway and Dr. Walter Swan for giving me this amazing opportunity. to find my worst battles had to overcome what was thrown at me oh yeah my destiny is my brain
to this class, Ms. Nayana Parker, whatever you find in the world you face, leave it much better. Graduates, today will indeed be a memorable day for you. You have discovered much about yourself and others, your field of study, and life while matriculating here at Elizabeth City State University. In the words of General Colin Powell, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Today we have witnessed the synergistic result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Remember, when Vikings combine these three efforts, we produce a strong, successful, and vibrant world. Vikings are resilient, persistent, and when it comes to defying the odds and expectations, we are defiant. Graduates, it is time to conquer. Thank you, President Spelling, Chancellor Conway, and all of our guests for making this commencement memorable for our graduates. Viking Pride! Viking Pride! Viking Pride! Would you please stand for the singing of the alma mater? With your permission, I declare our 166 commencement convocation closed. At this time, let us receive the benediction from Reverend Lawrence Chambers.
Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to be dismissed from this service, but never from the presence of Almighty God. Now on this, your day of graduation, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his love light up your life and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May hope spring from your heart as you look towards tomorrow. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Henceforth now and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen.